A few weeks ago I reviewed the new Audi TTS and although it was a very capable machine for covering ground rather quickly, it left me a bit numb, a bit cold. It seemed as if it had no soul and it felt too efficient. The car in this video however has got no such problem. It may cost a similar amount to the Audi TTS and it is even finished in Nardo Grey but that's pretty much where the similarities end. And welcome to the Caterham 7 620S. No, this isn't the R model that everybody raves on about, but I think this could be the better car. Now, some of you may have just raised your eyebrows in skepticism. So, let me explain. The starters, the R, has got no windscreen. That means you can't attach a roof. Therefore, when the British weather gets bored of being sunny, you're likely to get rather wet. Also, the S model has got some more creature comforts. For example, I have a windscreen, as you can see, and I've got a heater and heated seats. No, really, I really do have heated seats. Now, to be fair, the heated seats are optional, but for the sake of 200 quid, that is money well spent if you ask me. The S model doesn't get the sequential gearbox that the R gets, but I do have the same engine. So I have a two litre, four cylinder Ford Duratec engine. And to begin with, some of you may think, well, that's a bit boring. Ah, there's more. This engine has been mated to a supercharger, meaning this engine produces 310 brake horsepower with 219 newton meters of torque. That's 165 pound feet. The torque figure may not seem that impressive, but the BHP figure is where everything gets really exciting. This car weighs only 610 kilograms, meaning it has 375 brake horsepower per tonne. That is more than a Porsche 918. Yeah, more than a Porsche 918. Work the five-speed manual gearbox quickly enough and you'll hit 60 miles per hour in just 3.4 seconds. Now, to give you some perspective, that is faster than a Lexus LFA. <laughs> this car is mind-boggling. The engine, as you would expect, is extremely responsive. All you need to do is look at the throttle and this car will propel you into next week with a lot of savagery, power and noise. Flaming Nora! helps you to understand true speed, proper speed. Hot hatches are quick. Other sports cars are quick, but this is in a whole different league. However, despite all of the savagery, the 620S is a reasonably easy car to drive. The ride is nowhere near as hard as you may expect. And in all honesty, it is pretty agreeable. So if you really wanted to, you probably could use this as a daily. You'd have to be a bit mad and a bit unhinged, but it's doable. Mind you, you'll need to remember that you'll be driving a car with no safety aids whatsoever. There's no AEB, no airbags, no lane departure warning. You don't even get traction control, ABS or power steering. This car may not have any safety features, but as standard, I do get a four point harness to keep me strapped in. I also get a limited slip diff and I've also got sticky Avon ZZS tyres to keep me on the straight and narrow through the corners. Although corners aren't really straight, but you get what I mean. These tyres are super, super grippy once they are warm. When they're cold, they are a little bit sketchy, but these are pretty much semi-slick tyres. 
through the corners, as you would expect, the 620S is simply phenomenal. This corners in a way that some sports cars can only dream of. Compared to my Mazda MX-5s, this feels like a razor shot up scalpel, whereas my MX-5s feel more like an old mallet. This really is a car that feels alive. It offers so much communication. The chassis, it just gives you so much feedback, as does the steering, because of course, I have no power steering, therefore, you feel everything the car is doing. The way how this goes through the corners, it feels almost telepathic. The brakes are fantastic. They've got lovely feedback, a lovely amount of bite to them. The steering, it's got so much feedback. The car corner's flat, the grip is outstanding. And of course, as I've said in other catering videos, you can see the front wheels. So if you miss an apex, that's on you. Oh, MX-5, speaking of MX-5s. The Caterham 7620S may be a sharp car to drive compared to other sports cars on the market, but you do have to make some sacrifices. For example, this isn't what you'd call practical. Now I know, I know, I know this car is not built for practicality in mind, but if you were to compare it to a BMW M2 or an Audi TTS or Audi TTRS or any other sports car around the same price as this, you will find this marks very poorly in the practical marks. For starters, you have this boot which is pretty minuscule. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've owned bigger holdalls and it isn't exactly what you'd call secure. It, all I have to secure it are a few poppers. Well, I say a few poppers. This has got more poppers than a winter coat. Undo the boot. Well, undo the boot lid, if that's what you want to call it, the boot cover. This is quite a tedious affair. Once you've done that, you'll find that, yes, the boot isn't very large at all. However, if you pack it smartly enough, you can get enough in here for a weekend away. I should know because I've done it. In the boot, you also have a roof. And I use the word roof quite loosely because in all honesty, this looks like something you'd buy for millets. It's not exactly substantial, is it? Yes nor is it something you can put up in a hurry. So this isn't terribly practical. Although I suppose it's better than having no roof at all if you go for the 620R. So given the choice, I'd, ra I'd rather have this roof as opposed to no roof at all. And then you have the four point harness, which is great for a track day, but these will become quite tiresome day to day. Although to be fair, this is unlikely to be your daily driver, but hopefully you get my point. Okay, so this car won't be the most practical sports car going, but let's face it, this is a car you buy with your heart, not your brain. And this is more likely to be a weekend car or a track toy. Therefore, you won't care about how much you can fit in the boot or how much you can't fit in the boot. This car, this is pure driving joy in its purest, rawest form. This is a grade A hit of motoring euphoria, the ultimate high. I don't think, I don't think Caterham know what autonomous means and if it did, it would just wave a big two finger salute at it. I love Caterham for what they do. This is stripped back, pure motoring. And it's funny, people have asked me whether this car is road legal. Yes, it certainly is. And I love the fact how you can have what is essentially a big go-kart and drive it on the road with number plates. It is amazing. I salute Caterham for what they do. And long may they continue doing what they do. Because this is a true British icon, like the Mini, the original Mini. Every driver in this car, it feels special. And that's what you want from a sports car. So this car may seem expensive, but for the experience this offers you, 
You simply can't put a price on it. Hmm, yeah, speaking of the price. Time to talk about an area which, to be honest, I was hoping to avoid, and that is the price. As I mentioned earlier, this car is roughly the same amount of money as the Audi TTS I had a few weeks ago, and the Audi was over £53,000. So would you like to guess how much this car is? I'll give you a few moments. If you said over £52,500, congratulations, you are correct. To be fair, this car does have a few options, but the same could be said for the Audi I had a few weeks ago. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm comparing this car directly to an Audi TTS because they are different cars for different audiences. However, they are both sports cars at a similar cost. So this is a loose comparison. As much as I love this car, I mean properly love this car, it is difficult to ignore the price tag, especially when you bear in mind there's no touchscreen, I don't have electric windows, there's no aircon, and I don't even have a cup holder. But you know what? None of that really matters because not only are you buying a car, but you're getting an experience. You're getting an adventure, memories that are waiting to be made. That may sound very misty-eyed and very romantic, but in my eyes, it is true. And what I love about this car is every drive in it, it feels like an occasion, even if you're just popping to the shops to get some milk. And when pedestrians see you, they stop and stare, they smile, some even wave. And when you stop in a petrol station or a car park, people will come up to you and speak to you about the car. This is a great conversation starter. It's not the greatest car if you're a little bit self-conscious though. If you don't like attention, then don't buy this. The Caterham 7620S, it has that X factor, which I feel the Audi TTS was lacking. I don't want to sound like I'm comparing this car and the Audi TTS like for like, because that would be silly. They are different cars aimed for different people. However, they are both sports cars at a similar amount of money to buy. And although this car is less practical, I would have this over the Audi in a heartbeat because this just feels so much more alive. This car isn't perfect though. The mirrors are nigh on useless at speed because they shake like a jelly in an earthquake. And when you drive at night, the dashboard is quite bright. Therefore, it reflects off the windows, meaning you can't really use the wing mirrors. And this car is over 52,000 pounds, yet my gear knob isn't even on straight. I have tried to screw it back on straight, but no matter how I do it, it's always wonky. It has a petrol gauge that just makes it up as it goes along. I'll tell you what, at times, the petrol gauge is as about trustworthy as a re-offending criminal. It just lies to you. One minute you've got half a tank, then you've got quarter of a tank, then you're empty. I've never known a petrol gauge to be so indecisive. There's a few more niggles. The windscreen wipers, for example, they have just two settings. The first one is a little bit too fast, and the other setting is, hey Noah, it's time to build an arc. Yeah, it's really kind of frantic and yeah, so when it's just spitting a little bit, both wiper settings are too fast. Other problems, people seeing you. Now, I've driven a few Caterhams and it's not uncommon for cars such as a Range Rover to be completely oblivious that I'm here. So Range Rover owners, oh, check your mirrors, be more observant. Other things, if you have someone in the passenger seat, you may find it quite awkward to change gear because it's, well, it's quite cramped in here. <laughs> will, you, will you budge over? Hang on, hang on. <laughs> there we go, that's first gear. Good. Yeah. It's a bit snug. And two more things. Water. Rain, more specifically. So I drove this car into rain yesterday and although I had the roof on, I still got a little bit wet. My right side got wet because water was coming in through the gap in the door. My left leg and my right foot got wet as well because water was coming in through the floor. And when you do have the roof up, 
trying to get yourself in, particularly when you are six foot two and not overly flexible, is quite a challenge. But you know what? None of this matters. It just doesn't. This car is flawed, but by being flawed, it is more lovable. This car on this road with this weather, I, I really don't think driving can get, can get much better than this. Catrum, please don't ever, ever change. The Audi TTS, that left me rather numb. This on the other hand, every fiber of my body is buzzing. I am swimming in a sea of euphoria. I love it. I do wish this had a bigger fuel tank though, because this has the same capacity as a lighter. And just like a lighter, it certainly knows how to create a spark. Yeah, I like that, just made that up on the spot. This car is grey, small and nimble. This car is a supercharged squirrel. And it's nuts, completely nuts. Ah! As more and more cars become electric and eventually more and more cars will become autonomous, it does make me think, are cars like this close to extinction? Is the Caterham 7620S one of the last of its kind? I really hope it isn't. But if it is, it isn't going out quietly. Fudging hell! Thank you so much for watching this video guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. If so, be sure to like, subscribe and to ring my bell so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.